so you just cannot be a fresh plant delivery. So I get all my plants from Aquafleur, not a sponsored video or anything like that, but you know, they're just such good quality. Look at these. Look at these Java ferns, absolutely massive. So what I've gone for, you can get these guys in so many stores around uh, the UK and also in Europe as well. Aquafleur is the name. Credit where credit's due. I mean, look at the size and the quality of all these Echinodorus as well. So what I've got is I've got a load of Echinodorus here and here because I wanted to do an Echinodorus only scape. I think that'd be something really cool, like Amazon style. I'm thinking some a big group of angelfish, so like a whole angelfish tank. I've got a few over in the uh, Tetra tank, but I, wa I want to do like a species only one, maybe a couple of extras with them as well. And I've got loads of Java ferns just for future projects. And I've got an absolute ton of Anubius as well, because I want to do an Anubius only tank. More like a sort of hardscape only, a little bit like what Matt's had recently in the store. He's got like a, a big one piece log that's covered in all the different epiphyte plants. I don't necessarily want just one piece, but I want to do something quite simplistic. I really, really want to do some geophagus, and uh, this will lend itself well to it. And then I've got some um, little carpet and plants down as well. I've got Monte Carlo and Glossus stigma for another project that's coming up. Yeah, Superfish, they've sent me this look. This is the Cubic Pro. So I've tried some of their other um, all-in-one kits. You guys seem to really love them. This is one of their top selling tanks. So I want to see what all the fuss is about, really, and see what we can do with it. I have to test it first. I'm not sure how powerful the light's going to be, what type of plants we can use, but yeah, it should be a good project. I'm not ready to do anything with these uh, plants at the moment though, so I'm going to have to put them in a plant storage tank. So quite a few people have asked me, how comes I don't submerge all the new plants in water? Well, the reason for that is all of a sudden you've got another tank to maintain. Uh, it's just got plants in, there's no substrate, there's no flow, and it's a eventually it's gonna run into issues unless you use the plants like quite quickly. In this case, we've got the shallow little bit of water. The plants will keep growing. They, they won't require any maintenance at all and it's just absolutely perfect. These type of plants are easily converted as well to underwater, so it's all good. The only thing is, is that Kate's in this morning as well. She's behind me. She's taken one look at this and said, look at that mess. So she's probably gonna organize it a little bit better. <laughs> now in a previous vlog, I showed you guys the Timmy's new tank that we've got here and I was gonna be putting this sort of cocoa brick uh, letting it expand and then gluing it or siliconing it to this this background we've got but i've now decided against that for a few reasons because first of all this is brown and the wood is brown and it's just going to merge it all in as one i don't think that's going to look as good so i've ordered some cement powder that you mix up i'm going to carve this off a bit and just sort of paint it on and it should give a look like a real cool rocky background look like just like that, um, I've got some paints as well that can make some shaded areas and things like that. I think that'll look way better than just having it all brown with the cocoa fiber as well. Let me just stand this up so we can see what it's actually looking like. Alive, whoa, that was quick. There we go, look at that. It's already looking cool, but like I say, I'll get a blade and I'll just sort of scrape off sections of this just to flatten them out a bit and give them more of a rocky look rather than a dog poo look. <laughs> and then we get that cement on, we've got the gray um, rocky look with the wood coming straight out of it. All this area for like enrichment for Timmy. And then there's loads and loads of swimming room as well because his current tank I've only got a little bit, but turtles love water more than anything. So the water level is gonna be right up in this section, look, going across to that flat basking area there. We can have his basking light coming up here and that should work really well. Oh, that's just reminding me. Lots of people asking about that tank. Um, give you an update in a sec. So the Tetra tank has had another trimming session. I'm getting really good at trimming nowadays. I don't do it like I used to though. I do it a completely different method. I'm gonna make a video about it one, at some point so that you guys can get on board as well. I don't actually use scissors for anything anymore. You just get it with your hands and just start tearing. It sounds a lot more disastrous than it is, but in an established tank, everything sort of comes, um, it's not perfectly square. So when you rip stuff, it like some bits are tall, some bits are less. I just think it gives a way more natural look. So for instance, I was able to like do this whole tank in 10 minutes, less than that. And when I say this whole tank, I mean the, the front section. So as you can see, there's loads at the back, which Kate doesn't like, do you babes? Yep. <laughs> she, but Kate's more worried about it going crispy and catching on fire, which won't happen because these lights look, they're not hot at all, like just above, temperature of my finger so yeah there's no danger of anything like that happening i just really like that look in the background with it all growing up naturally look at this one here it's actually got flowers and there we go look purple flowers growing off of that one i think that's siamensis 53b or whatever it's called in different worlds <laughs> 
So previously when I told you about this tank, I said that there was a pairing of angelfish and then there was the one on its own. Well, here is the one on its own. Oh, there's the, I haven't seen them for ages. That's crazy. Oh, there's all three of them. They've all come out. So there's one there, there's one behind it and the other one has gone in the back section. Basically the two have paired up and they've just gone out in the back and they're, they're doing whatever. Now it's so dense back there in roots. There's, they've obviously carved out a little channel down the back. And what that means is with the amount of tetra we've got in the foreground, uh, the baby's got a really good chance of survival if they're gonna go back there like that. The only thing is food wise, I need to sprinkle more of the sort of finer foods into all that root system. And I think we could be on for some babies because this is a very territorial behavior here. And I can see now why the other angelfish just darted back there, often stays over this side of the tank because they've obviously got that section, something's going on in there. But yeah, I wanna make sure this all works. So I've got to keep feeding at the front of the crumble and I'm gonna go right deep into that section and crumble it all in there as well. So it falls through all the roots as well. But that'd be so cool to get some angelfish babies. I've never had any and I've never seen them in my own tanks. I've obviously seen them at the shop and things, but not in my own tanks, that'd be wicked. Now I could probably try and trim back that section so that we could get a bit more light going down there and actually see what the angelfish are doing. But I just think that's not, not a good idea at all. If, if they've gone back there, it's because they feel safe, like it's a good place for breeding. It'd be, be a bit horrible to go and destroy that sort of habitat they've created, wouldn't it? Just so I can have a look. I'm just gonna wait, see if there's any nice surprises. Like I say, with this amount of tetra in the tank, it's, it's not that likely, but you know, with how dense it is back there, if the babies can survive up to a certain size, then they actually will be all right. Fingers crossed. Now, the good news is the two that have coupled up is one of the smaller ones and one of the bigger ones. Now, this angelfish that stays out here on its own, really good specimen look. Great sort of thickness to the body, really healthy. I've had some angels in the past that didn't look anywhere near as good as this. They, they eat so well. And uh, yeah, look at that body shape really gorgeous fish. Now, providing he stays out of the way over here, he'll be absolutely fine. It looks like they're far more dominant than the other two anyway. So he, he naturally stays over this side of the tank a lot of the time. And as we saw before, when he started getting over here because he saw me here before he was getting food, they come straight out of that back section and tried to chase him off. And then he retreated, so all is well. Now, some of you mentioned about getting some more to add to the tank. So this one is on his own and I've taken that on board, I really have. Uh, but for the minute with these guys pairing up and doing some I'm just gonna just, just gonna stick with how we've got it because the the one on its own seems to be doing really well. Looks really healthy. Is putting on size and a coloration. Everything's perfect. So if it ain't broke, then don't fix it for the time being, anyway. So in the last vlog, I was a bit concerned about the uh, black water tank, but behind me, it was really, really black and it wasn't getting any lighter. I let it go for a while and then I did a water change and it's been nearly a week now and it's staying. It's staying at about the level you see here. And I think this is just about right. So it still looks like a proper black water tank, but you've got like, you can actually see to the back. So you can even see the Anubius on the back leaves on the back of wood there. Well, you can't because <laughs> the camera wants to pick up the fish. But I can see like Otto Sinkless on the back. My flash plecos I've seen on the rock as well. So they're hiding right now. Oh, we've got a nice bristle nose right up front here as well. Look at that guy, it's like a long fin variety. Looking so nice. Now don't forget there's a whiptail catfish in there as well. I saw it the other day. It blends in very, very well with the, uh, the substrate and the rocks to be honest. But uh, it, is, it is doing well, I have seen it. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. My flash pleco, there it is, look. It's always a bit of a treat when you do see it, but uh, it's actually quite easy to spot considering it's so dark. Just that it looks, those lines stand out really easily, especially when they're going vertically and the wood lines are going horizontal. Yeah, I can see you, buddy. We've still got the quarries doing well. They're just floating all over the tank, but yeah, so pleased that this is sort of, it feels like it's come to its sort of equilibrium and it's not getting any darker. It, it would probably get lighter now if I did another water change, but I actually think this is perfect. If it needs it, I'll give it one, but I don't think it needs it at the moment. It looks perfect. So another reason why everything is so, going so well and we're not getting really, really dark again is, remember I recharged the Purigen and that is in the filter now. Although a few days was left without it and it still didn't go proper black. So I think, I think we're onto a winner with this one.
So this is the Superfish tank. It's like a kit tank that I uh, set up, well, well over a month ago now, and it's actually doing really well, better than I expected it to. You might notice there's an additional filter in there though. This one here is actually a UV filter because I got the worst green water you can ever imagine. It's because we're like, right near the window, so it's all that sort of additional sunlight coming in, probably in the evenings, to be honest. Now, within a few days of having that in there, all the green water was, was gone. Basically, you've killed the microorganism off and it can't multiply anymore. I don't get any other algae on any of the plants at all, which is great. And in fact, I'm quite impressed by the lighting on this. I wasn't expecting the reds to keep so red. I thought they'd grow, obviously, but like sort of go more of a, a dullish greeny yellow but no, they're not at all. And as they grow taller and closer to the light source, they get even more red. But all the plants are growing lovely, not too fast as well. I'm starting to think this is actually like a really, really good beginner setup for planted tanks as well, because you know, as long as you've got enough stems and things in there, you don't really have to do a lot to it. I just sit back and leave this one, apart from clearing out that green water, but that can happen on absolutely any tank for any given reason. And all the fish seem to be doing well. The flow is quite high at the moment, obviously, because we've got two in there, um, but that's just to clear out the, uh, the water. I can take that out now and the gouramis they're still doing good as well they've got their own little sort of caves and things like that they do come up in the top section as well so I don't think the flow is too strong obviously it's not preferable and we're going to change that out but um, yeah they don't mind it too much like they come right at the top when you feed the tank Now the UV has been running for a good couple of weeks. There should be no more traces of the green water algae, which is a separate type of algae. So if you kill off all of it, there shouldn't be a way for it to come back because there's, there's you need two, to, well, or no, you need one to multiply, then those two multiply to four and so on and so forth. But hopefully that shouldn't be the case now. Oh look, our grammy coming straight to the front. They're getting some nice coloring on them now. Remember, these are the natural ones, so they're not gonna be all crazy and vibrant but they're sort of, they're very hardy and do very well. They're, all of them are still in here. Oh look, there's two coming to the front. Whoa, a little bit of a dispute. So they're quite territorial as, as any Grammy is really, but as long as they stay in their sort of zones, then everyone's happy. And I've given them plenty of different areas in this. There's like behind there, there's in there, that section where that one is, there's another one there, then there's this front area as well. So the Grammy will actually decide themselves the areas and the bigger the tank, the bigger the areas, but they can get along just fine in this and they, and they are doing so. Yeah, really nice. I'm really pleased with this setup and how it's actually developing. So this is the Santa Maria Enla Guppy tank. I don't know if you guys remember this, I, I made it quite a while ago, but it's, it's thriving in terms of like fish population. So Kate's just done a massive trim back for me. All the plants are just coming out the top and it was completely covered in duckweed. And as a result, these uh, Java ferns have had a bit of die off, but you know what? It's really easy just to just go in like this, look, off it comes. So I'll do that in a second to clear it up. There we go, that didn't take too long. Now you might be noticing this sorry looking female here. Well, I noticed just a minute ago when we were cleaning, she came from the back and she had one piece of duckweed just hanging out the front. Stop eating the duckweed again. One piece of duckweed hanging out the front of her mouth. And uh, I took her out of the tank, put it to the side, pulled it out and the whole strand was going all the way to the back. So I don't know how she's managed to do that, but I'm hoping she's now gonna recover now that she can actually get proper food in. Cause obviously that's affected swimming, it's affected everything. She's very skinny looking, but hopefully we can fix that. But yeah, just look at all these Santa Maria babies everywhere. Now I'm hoping a good percentage of them will turn out like their dad there, cause it's just, it's my favorite Endler by a long shot. Like it's so nice looking, just really interesting, isn't it? Let's get some nice close ups if they stay still for us. There we go. Look at that coloration. It's the orange Then the little bit of green at the back as well. They're just stunning, aren't they? Look, that's a beautiful female as well. Really, really good shape. But yeah, you can see what I mean now. Look, that is the curved sort of spine, very skinny. Hopefully, let's keep us eating the duckweed though. Le leave the duckweed alone. That was the problem in the first place. She literally had like an umbrella hanging out of the front of her mouth. And then the whole back end of the duckweed was all the way into the gut. And I had to pull the whole thing out. It was all curled and that. So hopefully, yeah, I'm hoping she's gonna do well. Is it cruel to keep trying? I think I've got to keep trying. 
she might, might, she might have a full recovery. I'll tell you what you don't see in this tank though, is any algae on the wood, and that's because of these guys. I think I've got three in here. Good sizes, well they're females for sure, because they're just absolutely massive. Oh yeah, I just saw the other one go back behind there, there you go. So yeah, this is a two foot or 60 centimetre tank. I think in America you call it a 10 gallon. So just going to show, with enough plants, free Amano shrimp, that's the only real sort of algae eaters in here. I mean, enders are live bearers and they do like to nibble on vegetation, but it seems like free of the Amano shrimp plus this amount of uh, planting has worked absolutely perfect. Obviously the light isn't, it's not massively strong, but it's not definitely not weak as well. Like there's a good amount of light pumping into the tank and it's, it's coped really, really well with it. So massively pleased about this tank's progressing. Oh, I knew it, I knew it. I knew you wouldn't be happy with it. Are you uh, rejigging it for me, babes? And there's more space in the uh, other tanks over there that you did before, because I've used loads of them. Oh yeah, you're taking those. Did you just spill water all over my equipment? Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs>